but out of all of the games that I um that I've played and finished, I think this needs a little bit more uh more context into it. It's Eternal Sonata for the it's PlayStation so 3. Is that and, and like Joe pointed out, I think it also came out on Xbox too. I could be wrong. Xbox, on yeah. yeah. Xbox 360. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there Um go. all right. Okay, so uh, with Eternal Sonata, of course, um, it's a Japanese role-playing game, like we mentioned earlier. Oh, originally released for the Xbox 360 uh, back in 2007, and then later on on the PlayStation 3. Uh, developed by uh, Tri Crescendo and published by Namco Bandai. PlayStation 3 had some notable changes, like additional playable characters, additional dungeons, and a more balanced dungeon difficulty in comparison with the Xbox 360. So the game centers around the late great Polish musical composer Frederick Chopin. Uh, some people say it's Chopin. And a grand yes, it's Chopin. Chopin. Yeah, like, like the 80s song goes, I like Chopin. There you go. All right. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a reimagination of the last moments of his deathbed. Spoilers. He's gonna die, of course. Well, it, <laughs> he's uh, dead. He's been dead for hundreds yeah. of years. Anyway. <laughs> hundreds of years. Okay. And oh, uh, so in his stuporous state, mm-hmm. so he dreamt of meeting a blonde girl named Polka, um, and he agreed on helping her with her certain condition. Along the way, they will meet other colorful characters and visiting um, other places until Frederick himself discovers that his real purpose, why is he there in this fantasy world that he himself has dreamt of. Uh, the combat system is traditional turn-based. Um, you, can control three, you can control three characters of your act, in your active party out of nine. A little bit more on the PlayStation 3 anyway, if you're going to play on... Um, play on that system uh what else oh oh the unique aspect of the gameplay would be the special moves of each character can pull off depending if they are standing under a dark environment like for example like a shadow or under a bright environment like for example like if you are in if you are uh, if you are battling on a plane and it's sunny yeah so all of the moves that you can perform will be light based moves if you are fighting in um if you're fighting in the evening, all the moves that you can perform are dark-related moves. And the soundtrack is something that the game boasts about, um, as it uses compositions made by Frederick Chopin himself. And as far as the reason why Eternal Sonata did not get a sequel, uh, despite the praises and the accolades it got, uh, it was nominated. Uh, it was nominated JRPG of the Year, uh, RPG of the Year. Uh, oh, it so with this, um, it lost to Mass Effect, unfortunately, um, during the Game Awards. And I'm like, bullshit, Mass Effect. <laughs> All right. Um, and um, so with uh, so I could not find any written documentation that pertains to why uh, the, the, the developmental team didn't come up with a sequel to this because it's quite unique actually uh, story-wise um, it, but what I have to uh, but if I have to guess the studio behind Eternal Sonata which is Tri Crescendo just wanted to focus more on making video game music than actually making video games themselves so what what does that mean? So the, develop, the developmental studio of um, the developmental studio of Transonata, Tricosendo, originally came from Tri Ace, who worked for the first Star Ocean games and the Valkyrie Profile games, right? Mm. And the founders of, of Tricosendo were Hiroya Hatsushiba and Motoi Sakuraba. Hiroya, Hiroya Hatsushiba is the one who directed this game and also who wrote uh, who wrote this game. So he came up with this game, uh, Hatsushiba-san. And before forming Tri Crescendo, uh, Hatsushiba uh, is a sound programmer by trade, and is uh, his partner, uh, Mr. Sakuraba, is a musical composer. So it goes without saying that they share an interest on classical music. 
with his experience working with other game developers in Japan and how role-playing games were booming in the late 90s and the early 2000s. He, uh, he figured, okay, maybe I should write up my own role-playing game, see if I like it, see, uh, see how that turns out. But I'm gonna encompass my love for music into this. So during the planning stage of Eternal Sonata, um, out of all of the classical composers they could have went with, rather than going with Beethoven, rather than going with Mozart, Tchaikovsky, they chose Chopin as the main focus of the story. And well, I'm guessing probably based on uh, on, Chop uh, on Chopin's internal and external conflict uh, when he was alive, that they went with his story. Uh, so according to Hatsushiba, uh, I'm reading an excerpt from one of the one of the interviews that he gave out. Uh, according to him, uh, people who play games and people who love classical music and um, are not necessarily sharing the same type of interest. Most people in Japan know the name of Frederick Japan. However, <laughs> most of the people who know of Japan think he is just some kind of a great musical composer without knowing any more about him. So most of them have heard Japan's music, but not a lot could put his name into it immediately. So by creating a, col uh, by creating a colorful fantasy world of Japan's dream, according to him, he was hoping that people would get into this game easily and also come to know how great Japan's music was. Mm -hmm. and, and it was great music. It was great music. Yeah, it was great music. Try Crescendo move on to other video game projects after that. So if you are going to look at Tricrescendo's activities over the years after they came out with Eternal Sonata, Tricrescendo partnered more with other gaming studios, mostly to be in charge of sound development. For example, um, after Eternal Sonata, they were involved with the latter Tales of Games and the Smash Brothers as well. And to my knowledge, the only uh, the only other game that came uh, that they actually came out with was Digimon World Redigitized for the PlayStation Portable and the 3DS back in 2012. And after 10 years after that, ever since then, Tricrescendo uh, has yet to develop any games of their own. It's always them partnering with other studios. Oh, we'll do your sound design. Because um, Hiroshiba and Sakuraba, musical composers, Designers, nice. musical designers by trade. Moto is Sakuraba is um, also the composer for a lot of Camelot software uh, games like yeah, um, uh, Shining Force, Golden uh, Golden Sun, and even Beyond the Beyond. Uh, what I really like with Moto is Sakuraba's. Uh, uh, music is it's always classical and he loves his uh, rhythm in these games he loves the uh, sound of the bass drum and the uh, rolling of the snare drums so it's like a marching song it's one of his like trademarks when making uh, music if you wanted to listen to uh, to some of Chopin's music you can download those compilations easily of uh, uh, the, the, the classical music for people who hate classical music you can download that you can listen to Chopin's music it's a great introduction this game is a great introduction to his music uh who the man was this is a good one-hit wonder to kind of define a one-hit wonder essentially yes because of the fact that it is musical and you know uh that one-hit wonders abide in music as well so yes eternal sonata for ps3 also on xbox 360 